Okay, I basically chose to be here today because I've been absolutely bombarded by people in the community asking what's going on at the airport. Because the people that know me know that that's been a passion of my life. The airport has been. And in answer to your question, Mr. Boyd, I know I'm not here to speak for the county board. I'm here to speak for myself and the member of the advisory board. In answer to your question, Mr. Greener, you are correct. I did take pictures of the airport, mostly to satisfy our insurance agent, Diamond Brothers. They didn't know how many planes were out there under control, Mr. Bo. So being able to fit out there for any length of time has to have proof of insurance. And there's no way to connect the pictures with the planes. I took the pictures of the planes and put them with the FAA uh, direction of the planes. So I really didn't see any of you guys out there doing any of this work. So I did it all myself on my own time, spent my own money, had the picture developed. Now Mr. Barn has all those pictures with the planes so he can check on the insurance. <coughs> Anyone that knows me knows before I make a decision, I research it thoroughly. I don't sit on the fence and later say, golly gee, why not do something to help out with that situation? I previously served on the county board for eight years and six years I was its chairman. During those years I spent a lot of time with all aspects of keeping the airport on the right track to success. I am now chairman of the airport advisory board. I was also on the advisory board for eight years I was on the county board. The biggest difference I've seen from the county board that I served on and this county board is the fact that we had a lot of respect for each other. And with this board I don't see any of that respect. We worked together to create the 911 system, the county health department, we created the standalone ambulance service, among several other issues. I think one of the things that surprised me the most that we have Dan Greener and Jeff Boyd and Carl Farnham on the airport advisory board representing the county board. And not one of these individuals has had a clue about how the airport should be managed or how the airport grew to what it was prior to the RSB litigation taking a giant hold on a landmark that was built and maintained with a lot of integrity and grit. <coughs> it was easy for Mr. Greener to make the motion in February that he was going to write a contract for commercial business and be able to operate the main hangar and have the contract ready to present the board in the March meeting. We all know that didn't happen. We finally gave a copy of the contract to Mr. Isaac. It had major issues and given back to Mr. Greener to basically start over again. Another thing I find absolutely ridiculous is the fact that you have a man that is a pilot, a mechanic, and has served on the airport advisory board for 25 years, and therefore being very attuned to grant assurances and all that goes into the work of overseeing and operating for a county airport. And this man is your own county board chairman, Chris Patrick. And not once have any of you guys asked you the question. <coughs> There's no one in the world that I have more respect for than my father, Russell Majors. And even though he has now passed away, I still hold him in high regard. He worked extremely hard his whole life to build and maintain his own business. The one thing in his life that he did for himself was to get a pilot's license and purchase his own plane. Over several years, he owned different planes, and among those, a 206 that was able to hold a casket. Many people were brought home in that plane to the final resting place, and my father never charged them a dime. If I remember correctly, he took Carl Farnham and his family to Auburn University to look at the campus of Carl was under 10, and he didn't charge them a dime. And he did that for many, many, many other people. And my father, the Cyril Mel with the Warner family, McCulloch family, Bill and Betty Huffman, Zimmerly Ready Mix, and Jack Asher, just named a few people, the ones that gave contributions continuously to maintain an airport that they were very proud of. These kind of people, the foundation will always be remembered. On the other hand, I can't really figure out where Rusty Bogue is coming from in his quest to maintain a commercial business in main hand. Out of his own mouth, he told the advisory board that the economy was bad. Not that many people charter planes anymore. Not that many people are ready to pay to get a, drug, a pilot's license. The crop dusting business is down. I asked, where's the positive? He has four employees and a person has to learn how he's paying for them. According to Gary Henry, who stated in the December 14th issue of the Beacon News, Mr. Bose grows, Mr. Bose grows $900,000, with $250,000 of it for his employees, 
Well, he supposedly had six employees and now down to four. But to the advisors board, Russell said he had a loss of $65,000 during the same year of 2012. Mr. Bogue has questionable business practices and for apparent sake doesn't look very successful. The fiduciary responsibility of the county board and of the airport advisory board is to make the best financial season of taxpayers of Edgar County. Rusty Bogue is a very good and qualified pilot, but as a businessman, he lacks the qualities to manage his own business on a day-to-day -day operation. The risk the taxpayers retain <coughs> RC Aviation the main hangar airport created by their own deficiencies in insurance and financial backing pose a great, greater liability than threat, a greater liability threat than assets to the county. At this time, RSB Aviation occupies several spaces that is not under lease for and is causing a problem for visiting pilots and staff. This includes our former AWOS room, our pilot's lounge, and our upstairs <coughs> storage area, where three fourths of space is occupied with belongings of RSB Aviation. Right now, he has 11 planes or so under his um, control of the airport. Among those, one has propeller off and laying in the hangar, one is being used to take parts off of, and the rest are being tied down on the tarmac. His own T hangar is so full of junk, there's no way to keep a plane in there. To address the issue of the county using, losing money if RSP was not paying rent in the, in the free spaces of the main hangar, there are numerous ways to make perceived loss of income. It has been done in the past and will be done in the future. Mr. Bogue has his business at Air County Airport not in spite of Mr. Wells or Mr. Patrick, but because of them. They were his biggest advocates. They have permitted the use of space and resources at no charge. It was, you know. But now, Mr. Bogue's reluctance to abide by state and federal laws and his inability to regularly pay for fuel has created great concern. To have a plane based in Illinois, you have to have a current Illinois sticker on your plane to be in compliance with state regulations, and the Rusty has none. As far as Rusty's fuel bills, they normally won't go through on his credit card until the third or fourth try. This is absolutely unacceptable. He has carried as much as a $20,000 fuel bill before he finally pays it off. When he was operating his crop dusting service last year, he had several spills and didn't clean a lot of them up and left stains on the tarmac, and there was still a bucket of chemicals sitting out there. This is just a sloppy way to conduct business. Rusty went 18 months without workman's comp insurance. And the only reason he got it last December was because he was going to be fined $500 a day until he produced it. Iron Brothers Insurance, representing the county, has asked for insurance to produce and Rusty's insurance company so they can have them on file. And so far, they don't have a complete insurance that RSP Aviation is fully covered. So the county is carrying heavy liability, not knowing what kind of or if Rusty has the correct insurance for his business. The new runway is put there under the direction of Jim Wells Airport Manager, the Airport Board, Jack Asher, who paid the county's portion of the project, IDOT and Hanson Engineering, not Rusty Boat. It had been on the airport layout plan for 30 years. Through experience with RSV Aviation, I feel it has been proven that the main hangar cannot accommodate RSV Aviation or any other commercial operation and still be accessible and utilized by the general public. The continued success of Roque Air County Airport relies on its ability to be managed in an efficient manner to meet its obligations to the general public and also to the state and federal government. However, any commercial entity, this has been offered before, desiring to operate out of the county airport including RSV Aviation, is welcome to submit its request to lease land to build a hangar see what force needs right next to the tarmac. And here are the rest of the pictures I took. You're going to pass them around for the stuff that I discussed. And the stuff's on the back of the <coughs> what they are. Oh, I have a thing. 